Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you about innovation in the government. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it does, it does work. So as I said, I do a lot of training and education on cloud computing um, globally. I, I don't know how many of you uh, know of ISC squared. Um, many of you probably CISSPs. So I'm CISSP. I also help develop the CCSP, which is a certified cloud security professional, um, which is um, very important. Uh, because this marketplace is changing rapidly. And most organizations, most people in organizations, really, although we've been doing this for a while, in the government, this path, uh, this cloud transition has been going for over 10 years, people still don't know what the cloud is. They still argue about the cloud. They don't really understand that Cloud computing is really different. It's really different. They still talk about migrating to the cloud as if it was a destination. Well, cloud computing isn't a destination. It's a transformation. And it's really not a transformation about technology either. Cloud computing is not about technology. They, cloud computing is about models. It's about business and mission models. It's about economic models. It's about operational models. And it's about how to identify and design these models to take advantage of the global and parallel nature of cloud computing. And if you can understand that, then you can innovate in the cloud, through the use of the cloud. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. How do you, as an organization, innovate in the cloud? So what are the steps to innovation? Very easy. You know, everything is in threes, right? So I got three steps to innovate. You can write them down, you can remember these steps. The first, educate your team. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have agreement on what you're doing, then you can't do it. So you have to educate your team. Second, rethink your mission. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Do it better. Do something you haven't been able to do before and implement a hybrid IT strategy. I'm gonna go into a little more detail on each one of these things, but that is it. That is it. Three simple items. But what do I mean by these three things? First of all, as I said, cloud computing is a transformation, not a migration. This chart on the left, look at them. There are eight, nine different domains that are all affected by cloud computing. Your security framework has to go from an infrastructure-centric framework to a data-centric framework because you no longer own all the infrastructure. Your application development has to go from being tightly coupled to being loosely coupled. So you can have the flexibility, scalability, and leverage that scalability of the cloud, the elasticity, elasticity of the cloud. Your data, you gotta go from mostly structured data to mostly unstructured data. 80% of all data being created in the world today is unstructured. Your business processes. When relational databases were developed back in the 80s, they were done in order to support serial business processes, step one, step two, step three, step four. Okay, that was done because storage was very expensive. Today, your business processes, your mission processes have to be parallel. 
So all your business processes, mission processes, have to be changed. The security controls. Since you no longer own your infrastructure, everything about your infrastructure, you're working in the cloud, the cloud service provider, your security controls have changed. Instead of the enterprise owning all of the controls, it's now in a shared environment. You have to work with your cloud service provider. It's a shared responsibility. The economic model. Nobody wants to buy anything anymore. Who came here on Uber or Lyft or the train, Metro? I did. I had to abandon my car in Alexandria to get here on time. Okay, that's all about OPEX. That's all about OPEX. That's what industries and agencies want to do. They want to get away from CapEx, buying stuff, to using stuff as they need it. The infrastructure. You're going from mostly physical to mostly virtual. And this is more important than you may think. So your organization, when it buys a server, it gets delivered on a loading dock, and what's the first thing they do when it gets on a loading dock? Any idea? Somebody tell me? Asset tag. An asset tag. Because heaven help you if you lose some of the government's equipment. I've been there. It hurts. Right? So what's the difference between a physical server on the dock and a virtual server that you have spawned? to do a particular job. It's a virtual asset. So all the effort that you put into managing your virtual, your physical assets, needs to be put into managing your virtual assets. IT operations. So you're going from mostly physical to mostly virtual. Your IT operations are going from mostly manual to mostly automated. And your technology operational scope it's going from local and regional to international. You say, well, we've always worked international. No, you always had a single data center within one local region. You knew where your data was. It was right there. So did Mr. Black Hat know exactly where your data is. Today, you're operating, and you want to put your data where your people are. It's a completely different mindset. So you have to look at your cloud deployment models, your service models, your implementation models. Your team has to understand what that means and understand the key terminologies associated with it, the definitions. What about the legal, contractual, security, privacy, and compliance considerations across all nine of those domains? Have you taught your procurement team about cloud computing? the fact that you're not buying a thing, that you're buying a service? Do you know how to monitor services? Do you know how to even uh, review your bill to make sure you've been charged the same thing? Not you as a technical expert, but I'm talking about your acquisition team. Does anybody ever heard of GDPR? The, what does that mean to you? That means you better understand where your data is, who your data is about, who controls your data, if they were born in Germany or not, and it's your legal team that needs to know this stuff. Cloud service provider due diligence. One of the worst things that agencies do is they select their cloud service provider, then they decide what they're going to do with it. They don't even look at the cloud service provider or evaluate it. Lack of due diligence. Cloud security strategy development and implementation. Everyone thinks they're just going to go to the cloud and it's going to work. Design, execution, and management of your ecosystem. Cloud computing is about an ecosystem. It is a supply IT. It's an IT supply chain. Okay? The adoption and business case development. All of these things are necessary to be successful. Before cloud computing, everything was serial, sort of like this business model of buying a car. When somebody walks in, the first thing they say, you, the salesperson comes up and says, hey, how you doing? Welcome to my, my car dealer. You want a car, huh? Well, what kind of car do you want? You want an American car? You want a German car? You want a Japanese car? 
Oh, you want a Japanese car? Great. You know, we have a lot of models of Japanese cars. You want a Toyota? You want a Honda? You want a Mazda? So they go through this discussion to find out what the customer likes and what they want. This is a structured process. Step one, step two, step three, step four. It's a serial process. It requires a priori knowledge of what type of data you're going to use, and you put it into a structure. This is structured data. This is not what today's business or today's mission is all about. It's about unstructured data. It's about using the economics of data storage to implement content addressable storage and flat storage architectures so that it doesn't matter how much data you have, you can still get it in an efficient manner. Can you imagine using a relational database on the internet? Exactly. Okay. This is changing what's happening with mission design. Application development has changed as well. Typically, when you're developing an application, tell me if this is not how your organization develops applications. The business or the mission owner sets the requirements. The developer builds the apps based upon the requirements. The system administrators implement the security controls based upon what the developer tells them to do. Then the security team looks at it, verifies all the security controls work, everything gets a thumbs up, and they go to deployment. Anybody recognize that process? Looks familiar? Have you changed it yet? You should have changed it 10 years ago. Why? Because right now, if you're going to go to the cloud, yeah, the business, the mission still sets a requirement, but you have to understand the environment that you're going into, the targeted environment. What security controls are actually there? Okay. Do you need to put security controls in the application, or are you going to be consuming security controls from the cloud service provider? Or are you going to be consuming it from a third party, something that the rest of your community is using? Because those decisions will drive the development of the application. Once that occurs, then you can look at the security controls across the entire ecosystem and deploy the application. There's a switch there. If you're still developing applications, the left on the left side, you're going to fail going to the cloud, guaranteed. You can't innovate by failing. Well, maybe you can, but fail fast if you do. You need to rethink your mission. Don't pave the cow path. Don't do the same thing just faster. Okay? Do things you couldn't do before. Do old things in a new way. Leverage the strength of cloud computing. What is the worst way of going to the cloud? And also, what is the, uh, what's the worst way of going to the cloud and what's the most popular way of going to the cloud? It's the exact same answer. Lift and shift. Okay? Lift and shift is the absolute worst way to go to the cloud. Why? Because your consumers don't expect things to work the exact same way. And by definition, they won't, by definition. And if they did work the exact same way, guess what? You didn't innovate. You failed. You're not leveraging cloud strengths. You're not using automation. You're not using scalability. You're not thinking how to make this mission parallel, parallelism, okay? You are not thinking about the ON slash OFF switch. So what does that have to do with anything? What's the traditional way of running a mission? You start the server and you never turn it off. Well, you know, 
economically, the whole purpose behind having an elastic, scalable infrastructure so that you can turn it off when you're not using it. Do your policies allow for you to turn stuff off? How can you innovate if you don't change something? How are you measuring yourself? This right here is an ROI model for going to the cloud. Are you only looking at cost? There are four different domains where you can measure improvement in your business or your mission. Why don't you use these domains, these KPIs, and these ROIs to create a business case? Anybody ever heard of Zynga? Anybody ever play Farmville? <laughs> Farmville was created by Zynga. Okay, great. They make games. So just like games, when you create an application or create a business process, you have three possible outcomes. First outcome, you write a game, you put it on in the marketplace, and it's a dud. It fails. The second possibility, you create a game, everybody loves it, and it becomes a cash cow. That's what Farmville was. People are still playing Farmville. I don't know why. I've never played it. What's the third thing that can happen? You write an application, you deploy it, and it's the greatest thing to say split, and you can't keep up. Everybody wants more, everybody wants more, everybody wants more. Woohoo! I'm rich! Okay. If you're designing the infrastructure to support this game, which one of these, which one of these options would be best served by a traditional data center? Any idea? Who says the red line? You say the red line, I'm firing you because I've just paid a lot of money, a lot of capex for an infrastructure I'm never going to use again. How about the green line? You going to you going to do that? No. I'm sorry. Can't say okay. this is red, this is green. This is the green. No, because I'm going to keep paying more and more and more money. So you're right, the black one, the cash cow. That's perfect for a traditional data center. Why? Because you can create a bespoke infrastructure that does everything perfectly. If you know exactly what's going to happen, how many resources you know, and it's not going to change, don't go to the cloud. It's stupid. And what are people doing? Going to the cloud with stuff that's steady state. Yeah. Wrong thing. Keep it in your data center. But the other two are perfect for cloud. So by definition, this is what Zynga found out. They initially had their own data center. Then they had a cloud-first strategy. You ever heard of that? They took everything and said, I'm going to take everything and go to the cloud. And they found out that they were paying more money than they needed for their cash cows, just for the infrastructure, because cloud is expensive like that. Okay? Then they decided, you know, maybe we'll keep our traditional data center and use the cloud for stuff we don't know what's, what's going to happen, the red line and the green line. By definition, it's a hybrid IT environment. Any organization of any size is not going to use just one cloud service provider, and they probably won't ever get rid of their traditional data center. You need to have a strategy for a hybrid IT environment from the very beginning. So I know you all know about cloud. You know about the service models, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. I'm not here to bore you. You also know about the deployment models, right? Public cloud, private cloud, yeah, 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 hybrid cloud, community cloud. So what am I talking about these for? 
Because what you probably don't know or haven't thought about are your implementation options when you go to the cloud. There are three implementation models. The first, the enterprise does it itself. The enterprise does a capital expenditure that buys all the infrastructure, you hire all the people, you buy the data center or maybe rent the data center. Okay, it's a cost center. You put out an RFP that lists the, um, and you select the winner based upon best value, not low cost, best value. And because you run the data center, you get to set all of the governance, all of the rules are yours. That's implementation option one. Implementation option two is using a managed service provider. So you don't want to buy all the hardware, but you want someone else to take the risk of buying all that hardware. So once again, you put out an RFP, you buy a managed service provider, and in the contract, you tell the managed service provider exactly how to run everything. So you are in control of the governance. Nothing wrong with that. But what is everybody thinking about now? The third option, going to the cloud. So um, who pays for the cloud infrastructure? It's the cloud service provider, it's not you. Who designs the governance and operational model for the cloud? It's the cloud service provider, not you. What's the economic model? It's profit for the cloud service provider based upon the marketplace. It has nothing to do with you. So you go to a cloud service provider with your requirements and they smile on your face and they say, oh, that's nice, that's nice. This is our infrastructure. But we want this. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. This is what we're selling. <laughs> this is the price, take it or leave it. If you don't want it, we're gonna go to, we have other customers out here that will take it. Who sets the governance for a cloud environment? The cloud service provider, not you. Okay, so what this means is that there are four deployment models, three service models, and three implementation options, 36 specific strategic points that you need to understand for each of your business or mission models in order to develop a strategy. Okay, have you done that? Well, you need to because it also affects other things. Your cloud deployment model really reflects your risk tolerance as an organization. The cloud service model reflects your employee skill sets and the training investment that you need to make. The implementation option drives your IT governance and also the amount of investment you need to make in the infrastructure. Do they sound like things that are important to your strategy? Right, so select the, the service model, deployment model, and your implementation option is critical. Give you an example. If I wanna to go to a public infrastructure as a service and I'm gonna build it myself, that's because I don't trust those cloud service providers with my data. I have a very low risk tolerance. Nobody can protect my data better than me. Okay, fine. But if I'm gonna do that, I need system administrators and I need developers and I need to train them on how to do cloud. So I need a large staff and I need a large training budget. And besides, I also need to pay for that infrastructure. So I need a large infrastructure budget so that I can manage my IT and have control of the governance. But if I if I can have a moderate risk tolerance and I want to minimize the staff I need and I don't want to pay a lot of money for training or for infrastructure investment and I'm okay with the governance being driven by the cloud service provider, hey, I can go to a public SaaS and save some money. 
So you gotta set a strategy that aligns with your organizational goals. If you don't do that, you can't innovate and you fail. So that's all you need to do to innovate in the cloud. For the government to innovate in the cloud, educate your team, make sure they know what cloud is. Rethink your mission. Don't pave the cow path. Do something different and recognize that in the end, it's going to be a hybrid IT environment. Recognize that from the very beginning. And don't do this cloud first crap. So thank you very much. Any questions? Did I answer everything? Definitely don't think so. Okay, thanks. You talked about, um, so I'll be brief. I know you guys can get started and put your, put your laptop up if you like. Yep. Uh, so, so the question is that you said that, you know, there are two scenarios where, where, you know, either you fail or you, the hockey stick, they're both good for the cloud. Yeah. And you said that the black curve, which is, you know, the sustained Love. model. Yeah. And you said that's not good for the, that's, that maybe you may be fine staying in the on-premises world. Yes, absolutely, because right? it's a steady state environment. But, but see, uh, what, what um, I've heard this argument from some customers that even though it is steady state, we are not efficient at maintaining that steady state, right? We are not experts in security. We have to repurpose our hardware every three years. So even if you're steady state, going to the cloud is beneficial in certain cases. Have you heard this argument? I'm just wondering if you can comment on that. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. If you are operating an IT environment in an inefficient manner, cloud, 99 times out of 100 would be better. Um, but if you can establish a steady state and properly train your team, then a bespoke customized data center is better. So it's all about your ability to be efficient in your environment. Yep. So that's absolutely true. Yep. Yep. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank great, you. Great session. Yes. Okay. So um, do I have an opinion? Um, in a private cloud on a virtualized environment versus a bare metal environment? No. In terms of what you're arguing about the state, state mm -hmm. um, if you have an opinion about whether there's a, a push, um, you know, whether there's a demand or disband to, to the private cloud versus, say, a virtualized environment or a bare metal? Okay, so private cloud is a deployment option. It's one of the four deployment models. That's completely separate from the technology choice you use in deploying the private cloud. The difference between using a virtualized environment and a bare metal environment really is about performance. Performance of the application that runs on top of that environment and your ability to uh, reduced resources required to manage that environment. It's a different decision space. It's just a different decision space. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, great. You had a question also? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, this is Carlton from C3IoT. Hey, so I was curious to, to get your thoughts to see, you know, if a customer's thinking about using artificial intelligence, uh -huh. how do you think that factors into the decision-making process that you've kind of outlined here and, and the decisions they, sh they should make around the cloud and what type of cloud? Sure, great, great question. Artificial intelligence. I'll put artificial intelligence in the same category as the Internet of Things, as big data analytics, as, um, you know, because cloud computing is foundational to all those requirements. The reason they're foundational is because you need to have automation 
in your IT environment. How can you have automation in your IT environment? That's because you need standardization. And as one of my friends, um, Henry Sankiewicz, who used to be with DISA said, brutal standardization across your environment. If you don't have brutal standardization across your environment, you can't implement automation. If you can't automate your IT, you can't deliver artificial intelligence, big data analytics, IoT, in an efficient manner. Does that? So cloud computing is foundational. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time.